Okay, so that title was a bit misleading, but not entirely untrue. I am going to talk to you today about modeling, but a different kind of modeling. Alright, backstory. I am an architecture student, and part of my studies is to build models to better explain my designs. And in this case, my thesis model was the final model that I was going to build as a student, and I thought I would go big this time. So a couple of people have asked me how I built my final model, and I thought um, I, I would show the video clips that I recorded during the process of model and kind of explain to you guys the process I did. So without further ado, so this is my thesis model. It is the biggest one I've done and the first time I've used timber as a main material. So this video was shot a long time ago, so do forgive the slightly lower resolution. It was from my older camera. I'll try to keep the video short and precise. So here we go. So first off, we grab the planks of timber put them on the radial arm saw and cut them into approximate length. Now this would make it easier for us later to strip them down because they would be shorter and the size would be about the right size. So then we bring it over to the table saw where we would cut them down into approximate size strips. Now these strips aren't perfect yet, they're still a bit curved and a bit bold, but that's when the planer comes into play. Um, the planer is basically to get each side level um, so that when we put it through the thicknesser, it would do a good job of getting it down to the exact thickness that we want throughout the strips. And how the thicknesser works, it basically runs the timber through the machine um, and it has a cutting blade on the top that trims off the surface. And you can adjust the bit up and down depending on what kind of thickness you want. Uh, now this process would have taken a lot longer if it hadn't been for my friend and co-worker Anais. Uh, she basically told me how much each piece would have to be trimmed off and that made my work a lot easier because then I could just simply run them through the thicknesser and um, tell the machine what sizes to cut it to. Once all the timber was perfectly sized and perfectly leveled, we could glue them all together. Now this took a ton of PVA glue. Uh, I was surprised by how much glue we actually needed but Josh uh, another friend of mine and also another co-worker in the machine workshop was just basically drenching the whole damn thing with glue, like so much glue. Um, anyway, he told me that more glue is better so like you can get a better seal out of it. Now the gluing of these strips had to be done pretty quickly. The glue would have started drying the moment we set it onto the surface. And with a few clamps and extra sets of hands to help, uh, we got this done pretty quickly to dry and once that was done, we could start scraping away the excess before running this whole piece through the thicknesser once more. So, like I said earlier, we had to leave a bit of room for all this sanding and all this thicknessing just because um, there was a lot of processing to be done before the timber base was ready. And this timber base had to be done in two parts. Basically, the thicknessing machine that you saw earlier, that green one, could only fit half of it in at once. So, Basically, the second part is the same as the first part and we won't go through that again. Once that's done, we have a solid piece of timber that is ready to go into the CNC milling machine. Now, this model had a difficult contour that had to be cut. And for this, the CNC milling took over 8 hours to complete. Uh, it had to be done over 2 days to get it right and my friend Darcy kindly helped me out with this part. It was one of the more tedious cuts because of the really fine details in them, uh, mainly steps and balustrades that I designed to go onto the landscape of this site. Now as you can see the CNC machine has a drill bit at the end of it. So what this does is basically it takes away chunks of timber that I do not want in the model and leaving only what I've designed and uh, prepared on the computer file. In this case it was a couple of steps, hills and um, some other parts of the river that I wanted to cut out of the timber base. Alright, so once the CNC was done milling, um, I still had to sand every inch of this base to clean it up. Uh, it had lots of rough edges and rough surfaces and it took about 4 days in total to sand all this down but I'm not going to show you all this, I'm just going to fast forward all this and get to the point where it's done. Now once I was done with all that sanding of the base, I could put it aside and concentrate on the buildings of the model. Now the important part of any architecture model is context. And what that means is basically what surrounds the project you are building. So in my case, that was in the lower grid of the Melbourne CBD. And it was office buildings and restaurants and basically any building that surrounds my project. 
So for this, I used a laminating technique which involved alternating end grain patterns and gluing them together, ultimately shaping them into the forms of the surrounding buildings. The buildings were ready by this point and could be glued onto the base and clamped in position and I had to wait yet another day for this because the glue had to dry. By this point, I realised I had made a mistake and forgot to trim the model's edge but it wasn't too late, we still managed to cut it out but I should have done this before gluing the buildings on. Now, all of the timber parts of this model has been done and what's left is to apply a coat of wax-based protection on it. Now, this was my first timber model so by the time I was doing this, I realised I was running out of time. So I stayed overnight to finish up this part of the process. It had to have at least two coats of Osmo before moving on to the next step. Now I didn't capture much of the final parts of this project on film because I was rushing for the deadline but basically the design building, the final building that was going to sit on this model was done by laser cutting perspex sheets and then sanding the surface so that it would uh, have this matte finish instead of that glossy finish. And um, besides that, I was also 3D printing some interior fixtures on the MakerBot printer in the other room and yes, by this time, I was multitasking the shit out of myself. There was only 3 days left and the main building was still not up. I had to do all the wiring before we could build any of the buildings so that's what you see me doing right now. I'm soldering all the LED lights, these LEDs which shine out of the building giving some interior light. And by this time, I was one day away from the presentation when I finally began the assembly of the final design. And this part was done uh, basically by, like I said, the laser cutting of the Perspex sheets, sanding them, and of course the columns were these PVC sticks I bought at the art shop. And these PVC sticks, basically I just made a simple jig that would allow me to cut it precisely to the exact height I needed. Now keeping this height means I could keep the whole model level and almost perfect. And there we go, the model was finally finished and all that was left to be done was a bit of cleanup polishing and it was ready to be presented. I did however run into some electrical problems on the day of the presentation but all was well and I fixed it in minutes before the final critique began. So I hope you enjoyed that little video I made. It was basically a really quick um, idea of how I built this model. This model took over three weeks to build and cost me uh, not as much as I expected, but it did cost me a bit. Um, I love working in the workshop, it's given me so much opportunity to build great stuff. I'm working on a, uh, a little cup at the moment, maybe I'll put it in at the end of this video. But yeah, thanks for watching. So today's setup is a bit different. Um, I borrowed a lav mic from my friend James. He told me to mention him. Hey James! And I also borrowed this ring light from my friend John. He's an actor and a writer and he basically has this beauty light that he lent me for the day. And it makes these really cool rings in my light. Rings in my eyes. Can you see it? Like that. <laughs>